song always reminds me, uh, show us your power and glory. Uh, Moses asked that in the Old Testament. Uh, he's talking to God, you know, Sh- show yourself to me. And, and so God, you know, hides him in a rock and uh, lets him see his backside as he passes on by. Uh, take that what you will. Uh, the cross has always been seen as God's backside, what we get to see of God. Uh, and from the cross, we get to see his mercy and his forgiveness, how he is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, as he proclaimed to Moses as he hid him in the rock. Uh, and so as we go about our day now, we get to see God's mercy and his grace, his glory that is revealed on the cross as he dies for you and me. Uh, so now we get to pro, uh, receive that gift of his forgiveness as we confess our sins, what we've done and that we should not have done, and the things that we didn't do that we should have done uh, as we confess before God and before one another that we have sinned and thought, word, and deed. Is this your confession? If so, answer by saying yes. I have good news for you. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our God has had mercy on us and has forgiven us our sins because of the blood of his Son, Jesus Christ. In the call, as the called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, therefore, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us continue now, King of Kings. <laughs>
we gather together, brothers and sisters in Christ, let's greet one another in the love of our Lord and Savior. You know, on these little snowier days, it's kind of fun to be a little more formal, I think. It's like, like we're in a living room here, and, and uh, a fireplace, you can imagine. And, you know, just, just the family of God coming together is awesome. So, very good. As we have our announcements, I want to share one thing real quick. And uh, for if, if the office in our um, church software for a directory has your email, you'll notice that you get an email this morning. Uh, and uh, it's scheduled to go out around 12. Maybe you got the email already, I don't know. But we had an anonymous donation to our congregation to uh, have a two-year subscription to something called Right Now Media. We heard about the, this uh, program uh, for Right Now Media uh, at our uh, district pastors conference. There was a special rate that they negotiated for the congregations of the North Wisconsin district. And so uh, we were thinking about this media subscription. And what it is, is um, so that you can be equipped and using your television or phones uh, for not only all the normal things that we use them for, but also to be able to access a media library with Christian content and Bible studies, even for us to be able to have our own uh, church page as part of this, where we point you to different things and we can use this for our different groups in our church and even our own Bible studies. So this media subscription uh, is a gift to you through this anonymous donation that we will get to make the most out of hopefully for the next couple of years. So if you get an email about Right Now Media, be sure and, and open it. Don't fear. It's not spam. It's not a virus or anything like that. It's something that we're making available to you that this an anonymous donation was able to bring about. And you can explore, browse through that, see all the different goodies that are there and what might be useful to you. Maybe it's something that you're looking for. We want some marriage enrichment uh, resources. Or I want something for, for myself as a student, some devotionals. Uh, and so you can look at this, or, or maybe you're, you're wanting to like look at a book of the Bible and want to go through a Bible study just on your own. Uh, you are going to be able to do that through this Right Now Media subscription. So it's something that, as a members of as members of Christ Lutheran, you will be able to access and uh, and use hopefully uh, as a good resource for you, uh, so that you can put your smart TV or your smartphone good use also in your Christian walk. And so that is something that we're excited about. Also, in our announcements, just a reminder, we have our love offering that we'll be gathering up after the service today. Uh, and this will pretty much be our, our last opportunity uh, to do that. Uh, and we normally do that during our Thanksgiving services and the week following. So uh, this is your chance to uh, take part in the love offering so our Board of Social Ministries can help out all kinds of organizations and people that are truly in need. So, uh, for example, uh, one of the groups that we help out is Bethesda, and so people with disabilities are able to receive uh, Christian resources, and there are a whole host of other programs uh, if you want to know more, Sandy right there is like the perfect person to talk to because she knows all about all of these different things. So if you're bombarded after the service, I apologize for that. But, but uh, if you would like to take part in that offering, this is your chance at the end of the service. Thank you already to all of you that have been so very generous in your support of that. Also, just a reminder, uh, Bethlehem Walk coming up next week. Uh, so, uh, see the bulletin for more details about that. This coming Thursday, the 5th at 6.30, we're having our Christmas concert, our service of, of carols and lessons. So that would be something very special. We want you to join us for that. We've been getting ready. Uh, and maybe you have questions about that, you can ask Alex. And if you get bombarded after the service, I apologize. But I know you'll love to talk about that too. 
because we're all looking forward to that very much. And, and also, uh, next Sunday is the cookie walk and craft sale. Uh, anyone can bring cookies, and uh, you can bring cookies and earn money for our different uh, activities that they will be doing and, and, and being part of the mission and ministry of our congregation. So if you have questions about that, just ask Tammy, and Tammy, if you get bombarded after the service, I apologize, but I know you'll love to talk about that too, certainly. And uh, last but not least, uh, we have our puppet service coming up a week from Thursday, December 12th at 6.30, and it's entitled a Tree Lock Christmas, so please do join us for that, and if you have questions about that, Yvonne knows all about that, and Yvonne, if you get bombarded after the service, I apologize, but I know you will love to talk about that too. And so we've got all kinds of wonderful things today uh, coming up in this very busy but very wonderful month. December. Uh, and now, after all my blabbering on here, we're ready for those lessons. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading comes to us today from Isaiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. The word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be lifted up above the hills, and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Now as we hear the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us stand as we hear those words together. This comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24. Jesus said, But concerning that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake. For you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready. But the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Here ends the Gospel reading. We now continue with the children's message. You may be seated. We invite any children to come forward for the children's message. As we gather together today, I have a picture up there on the screen. What do you see up there on the screen? Yes, a map. And what is it a map of? I think I heard it. The map of the world. Right? So if you look carefully, you can see right where we are. Uh, you can see the Great Lakes and Lake Michigan, maybe, in the left hand, where the United States is. Uh, and underneath all that snow, that's where we are. <laughs> and so as you look all around the world, if you go on the other side of the map, just to the left of ways of China and to the right of Europe and just to the uh, north on the top side of Africa, just to the right above Saudi Arabia. There's where the Holy Land is, and, and that's the part of the world where we know that Jesus came and he was born. I want to show you something here, too. If you look at the windows, look at this thing right here, if you can see it. You know what that is? That 
is a picture of the world, <laughs> actually. Uh, a picture of the globe, kind of matching the one up on the screen. And the reason that that is there is because as you look at the stained glass window and the light streaming in and all of the symbolism there with, with God's word and with the sacraments, with, with the cross and up on top and, and the, the circle representing God's eternity, uh, all of this just really expands our vision so that as we see the light streaming into the church, as we see our first Advent candle lit right here, it reminds us that with the coming of Jesus to our world, that we are preparing to celebrate this Christmas, with the coming of Jesus to the world, the light has shone on all the earth. And as we listen to our Old Testament lesson. This is what it says. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations, all the nations shall flow to it. And we are blessed because as we look at all the world around us, we know that already on, on every continent and in every corner of the world, we, we had our Guatemala group that went to Guatemala, so all the way down uh, south of the United States when we were in Guatemala. And, and everywhere you go, there are people like you and me, who worship Jesus, who believe in Jesus. And Jesus has shown the light of his love, and they have seen his love, just like you and I have seen Jesus' love. And Isaiah wrote about all of this long before Jesus was even born, because it was God's plan all along that the whole world would be a place where people all over can believe in Jesus. Yeah, it's a big, big circle, right? The world is huge, right? But everywhere you go, people believe in Jesus. And we're so very thankful that God's word has been fulfilled, that people get to hear about Jesus in their own language, whether it's English or, or Spanish or whatever language it may be. And so let's have a prayer. We pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for the spread of the gospel all over the world. Help us to tell the good news of Jesus so that all may hear and believe. Amen. Thank you all very, very much. You can go back to your places as we sing our next song.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearest brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, once there was a family that went out to the movies. Many of you maybe have been to the movie theater uh, over Thanksgiving break, or, or that's something that you might like to do. Well, this family, as they were going to see the movie, one of them, a, a boy that was the teenager of the family, stopped to pick up some popcorn on the way into the theater. By the time he got into the theater, however, the lights were already beginning to turn down low. And he wasn't able to pick out from the crowd in the theater where his family was. And so the lights kept getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, and he was pacing up and down the aisles looking for his family, and the movie was about ready to start, and the lights were as dim as ever, almost completely dark, finally. He stopped right in the middle of the aisle and just raised his voice and said, Does anyone here recognize me? Hopefully his family said yes. <laughs> it helps to walk in the light. That much should be obvious under normal circumstances. As soon as you walk into a room, you turn on the lights. However, <laughs> there are exceptions to that rule. And oftentimes when I'm here in the sanctuary, might be even at night time, I don't turn on all of the lights or, or any lights, and sometimes I've paid the price as I've walked smack dab into the pillars on the side of the church. They don't give. <laughs> Not a bit. It's kind of like these metal things up here that I've hit my head on when decorating for Christmas. And, when the lights are out, I've also uh, tripped over the stairs here in front of church or walked into the communion rail or tripped over a guitar amp or two. It's a wonder that I've never broken anything. <laughs> you get the picture. Even recently, when my family was experiencing a, an escape room here in Marshfield, we had a difficult time running all over the campus where we were when the lights were turned off. Dark times call for a walk in the light. Our text for today is from Isaiah chapter 2, and Isaiah understood clearly that ancient Judah was walking in dark times. The once great nation of Israel that had been so prosperous under King David and King Solomon now had been fractured, split in two, and the northern kingdom had been conquered, defeated, decimated by Assyria and scattered to the four winds. And now the southern kingdom of Judah, they had enemies of their own that were trying to do them in. But not only that, they also had danger inside the city walls. In their own streets and houses and public places. There, things had grown dark too. Sure, the priests were doing their sacrifices and the people were performing their religious duty, but their hearts were far from God. They did not trust in God above all else, and they placed their trust in just about anything else. They looked elsewhere for peace and security and did not trust the Lord. They were selfish and greedy and did not obey the Lord and care for those who were in need as God had commanded there was no justice in the land. Judges could be bribed, and the people sought injustice as long as it benefited them. 
Therefore, Isaiah the prophet spoke harshly to Judah. He told them that they would be conquered by a foreign power and their nation would be hit by hard times because they did not trust in God above all else. They did not obey God's commandments. They did not help the helpless, but rather oppressed them. And so Judah would go through dark times, even darker days ahead, and dark times call for a walk in the light. Now, are we living in dark times, walking in dark times of our own? If we look at the news, we sure are, as we wrap up the 48th week of 2019, there have been 45 school shootings, most recently on November 15th at a town called Pleasantville, New Jersey, of all things. Gunfire erupted at a football game, injuring an adult and two minors, and five people were charged in the shooting. Just one day earlier, two students had been killed and three injured at a high school in Santa Clarita, California. The shooter took his own life as well, and even on Black Friday in Syracuse, a man in a shopping mall, was shot in the leg. Black Friday has become very, well, out of control. Around the world, this is also true. Near London Bridge, there was a knife attack, and two people killed, and again, three injured, the perpetrator, was shot by the police and killed. Just hours later, in The Hague in the Netherlands, there was a similar knife incident, and three minors were wounded. Police were able to arrest the perpetrator responsible. Even recently in the news, the former NFL player Terrell Pryor is in critical condition after being stabbed at his apartment in Pennsylvania yesterday. Thankfully, despite all of this bad news, as we look at the big picture, overall the violent crime rate has plummeted drastically by 50% since the early 1990s. However, there are some violent crimes, such as rapes, that have been on the increase. Economically, it's also a mixed bag. Some economic indicators are up, some are down, and some are holding steady. However, there is a great deal of uncertainty and fear about the trade war in China. These are examples as we look around us that there are contradictions in everyday life. Things may seem like they're going good, but really be going bad. Things may seem like they're bad, but can really be going good. The environment has taken many hits, and I don't need to tell you the weather seems out of control. We're experiencing right now a newsworthy major storm, and another winter storm is taking shape out in Cal California. It looks like we might be in for a wild ride, and things around the world are as they ever were, and yet we grow weary with all of it. Impeachment hearings, Brexit, flooding in Arizona, fires in the Amazon, <laughs> protests in Hong Kong, an extremist leader killed in Burkina Faso, and yes, four major ongoing wars with the one in Afghanistan having gone on ever since 1978, the year that I moved to Wisconsin and entered the fifth grade. Just south of the border, the Mexican drug war has continued raging on ever since 2006, and there are eight other wars that are not classified as major wars, but 
awfully bad, just the same, including the Iraq conflict and 20 other conflicts that are categorized as minor, including the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in Myanmar, and that one has been going on ever since my dad was nine years old, 1948. The church is not immune during these dark times either. In 2007, 16% of Americans claimed no religious affiliation. By 2015, that number had grown to 23%, according to a Pew Research poll. And although the number of people who say they went to church last week has only dropped 1% from 1940 up until 2015. It is also true that now for the first time in history, less than half of Americans, 46%, identify themselves as Protestant. There seems to be an increasing cultural divide that is separating the church from many Americans and Protestant churches such as ours, are bearing the brunt of this seismic shift. To put it another way, even when the church does well and holds its own in a changing world, it often seems like it is fighting a losing battle. And within the church, even as it is so difficult to spread the gospel of Jesus outside the church, but within the church there are divisions, problems with indifference, harshness, recklessness, self-absorption, deafness to God's word, living blindly, guided only by pseudo-logic, pseudo-religion, and pseudo-values, or else random resignation to the twists and turns of both the human imagination, and our inborn propensity towards evil. Yes, we live, we live in dark times, and dark times call for a walk in the light of the Lord. So Isaiah called for the people of Judah to do just that, to walk in the light of the Lord, looking ahead to the latter days. Days will come, Isaiah said, when people will stream, will flow from all nations to worship the true God. The little hill where the temple in Jerusalem stood would somehow become the greatest mountain of all, and people would listen to the teachings of the Lord and do them, and there would be peace. And swords would become plows to provide food. Weapons of war would become tools to feed the hungry. And Isaiah's message is simple. Walk in that promise of the light of the Lord during dark times, for the latter days will indeed come. And in fact, we are blessed to be able to see that those days have already begun. The latter days have come. Just as Isaiah prophesied, his words came true just a little over 700 years after he wrote the words of our text. His words came true as The light of the world, Jesus Christ, came to this place of darkness. As he came down from heaven above to our world below, and as the angels sang peace on earth at his birth. And when he began his ministry, people flooded into the countrysides and gathered all around to hear Jesus preach the Sermon on the Mount. And then Jesus told Peter, put away your sword when the mob came to arrest Jesus. And as Jesus went to the cross, the sun refused to shine. As it says in Mark's gospel, darkness came over the whole land from noon until three in the afternoon, at which point Jesus breathed his last And the temple's curtain was ripped in two. 
for Jesus had died. He entered the darkness of death, and he did that for us. For you, he did it, and for me, he did that. And then he was placed. His body was set into a tomb that was pitch black with a stone rolled in front of it. And Jesus, the light of the world, was enveloped in darkness. But... But that tomb is now empty and that darkness was shattered on Easter morning as Jesus left the tomb and walked out into the sunshine of a new day. And the promise of Isaiah was kept for the Lord himself was walking in the light of the Lord. He had risen from the dead. Now you and I are called to walk in the light of the Lord. And this call sounding forth from Isaiah the prophet is simply the call to walk each day of our lives with our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is my prayer for each of you, that you truly see that Isaiah's prophecies have been fulfilled in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And that we are living in the latter days when people from all nations stream together to worship the true God, to listen to his word, to seek to do what he commands. Today, it is still true that people from every corner of the globe worship Jesus. Pick a continent, and there on that continent will be people that worship Jesus, that attend worship and listen to God's word. There will be Bible studies, this very day, there are Bible studies in hundreds of languages around the world. Millions of people listening to sermons like the one you are hearing. And then think about the Lord's Supper and what that must look like to God in heaven as people from all over gather at the table. And we believe that at the table, at the supper of our Lord, Jesus is truly present, welcoming us in, welcoming people from, from every ethnicity, Hispanic and African American and Native American and Caucasian and Asian, and everywhere you look, young and old, men and women and children, people who are well off and people who are struggling to find a job, people who have a, a, a thousand stories, 10,000 stories, as we gather together of redemption, sinners coming from every background to receive forgiveness and new life in Jesus' name as we gather for this precious meal. And as we think about that, it truly brings a profound sense of gratitude in our hearts for the miracle we see unfolding before us as we do something so simple as kneel at this communion rail and receive our Lord's body and blood in, with, and under the bread and the wine of Holy Communion. It is a foretaste of the feast to come. And so, of course, we are still waiting for Isaiah's prophecy to come true in all its fullness. We are waiting for all nations to worship Jesus without competition or persecution. We are waiting for all swords to become plows and for all wars to transform into a time to feed the hungry. And we might well ask ourselves, when will Isaiah's prophecy finally be fully completed? And the answer, as we've been talking about in many a sermon here at this time of year, is this, 
that this will happen at the last day, on the day that Jesus returns in all his glory and power, and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. We are waiting for that final trumpet call. Just a little while ago, a few weeks ago, on November 11th, we marked Veterans Day. And on Veterans Day, we remembered those who gave their lives for our country. We remembered those, and many of you, who have served our country in the armed forces. We remember those who took up the sword of war to protect us so that we can have food on our tables and live in peace and safety. It was a good thing to do. Oftentimes, on Veterans Day, ceremonies end with a trumpet playing taps. Slowly, with respect and honor. And we remember. But on that day, on the last day, as the trumpet sounds, there will be another song that issues forth. Not taps, but reveille. For death will be undone, and bodies will rise from the grave, and the final victory will be ours in Jesus Christ for all who believe, and our enemies will be gone, and all nations will stream to God's holy mountain in peace to worship him forever. We look forward to that trumpet call. But for now, even though we live in dark times, and indeed because we live in days that are dark, we are called to walk in the light of the Lord. So walk in his light as we do, as we gather together for worship and come to the Lord's table and come read and hear his word. Come find peace for the depths of your soul in the glorious death and resurrection of Jesus our Savior and together let us live out our lives walking, walking together in the light of the Lord. Amen. Let us now stand and as we anticipate that glorious day, confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we worship the Lord through our offerings today. Um, remember, Please stand as we now continue in our prayers for all people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people everywhere according to their needs. Dear Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the gift that is your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, how he has come to us, forgiven us our sins, and renews us before you, and is bringing us to you, especially on the last day. Lord, keep us in the faith, strengthen all churches throughout the world, uh, especially today as we consider the churches in Guatemala, that you would be with them and provide for them to keep them strong in their confession of faith towards you, that we also may join with them in singing your praise and receiving your gifts. Lord, we ask that you be with all lands whose people are persecuted, those whose lands are filled with violence and woe, that you would bring peace and still the avenger, and Lord, that you would also grant to us peace and work in us peace towards our neighbors and our families. Lord, we lift up to you all of our marriages here at Christ Lutheran and in Marshfield, that our homes would be places where our families are blessed, 
where people are defended and kept safe, where children are fed and clothed and nourished and taught, and where all may receive the benefits from your great bounty. Lord, be with those who travel, especially in these wintry conditions, that you keep them safe in their travels, that they may make it to their destination to give you praise and to fulfill the jobs and tasks that you've given to them. Lord, be with all people, the governments of the world, that they may work together and cooperate so that we may enjoy the fruits of your creation as well. Lord, above all things, come, Lord Jesus, come, that we may receive all from your hand and give thanks and praise on the day when that trumpet sounds and we are all walking in your light. Lord, we also lift up to you those in our congregation, those whom we love, those whom have requested our prayers. Lord, we also give thanks for this past week that Amelia was baptized into your name as we've been called now your child, and now you promise to be with her. Grant her family the strength to nurture and raise her in the faith that she may join with us at this altar and receive the gifts you give us here today. But above all, we ask for your mercy and your grace for these days to come, especially as you have now taught us to pray our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he gave him thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Congregation may be seated. We invite our elders to come forward as we continue now with the distribution. Please stand. This true body and blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ keep you steadfast in the true faith from this day forward to life everlasting. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen. Let us now receive this blessing from your God as you go about now your day and your week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Let us sing now our final song, For unto us a child is born.